chuck falling off the arbor while I was drill, uh, hole drilling for the base play of the CNC machine. So obviously this is not something I can live with so I need to get this fixed. Now this is a fairly new drill press. Uh, press. The arbor is new and a visual inspection makes me think it's probably okay. I seem to remember when I got it I didn't hammer home the, um, the chuck so I suspect it was, it's never been properly seated on there. Um, as it was coming off so easily though, I'm going to um, take this over to the workbench, just give it a quick inspection. I'm going to um, try and take the arbor out here uh, and I'll give that an inspection as well. Deburr it if necessary, um, clean it all up, make sure there's no oil or grease on there and then I'll hammer it properly home. Um, you, you can give them a bit of a wallet to get them seated. Um, not too much though. Uh, I don't have a copper or hide mallet, so a wooden mallet and maybe a little block of wood um, for that job. Um, first things first though, get the arbor out of the quill. Um, now, there's a slot here, and you have an arbor driver, um, but there should be a hole in there which I need to access. So, first things first is slacken off the motor and then move the motor forward so it should allow me to turn this and line up the two holes yep so you probably can't see that typical it's jammed on now but if I slide that in there and I'll just bring you around so you can see You can just see, just here, is the top of the arbor inside the quill. Right, so that's the arbor out. Caught on the table. Oh, that. So if you if you leave the chuck slightly protruding when it drops, it will catch in there quite nicely. And so uh, there we go. So you've got the arbor now firmly jammed in the chuck, of course, and the chuck. And this is a Morse taper, and the bit in there, if I can ever get that back out, um, that's a Jacobs, a Jacobs taper uh, into a chuck. That's a fairly common um, setup. So, uh, if you're wondering, uh, this chuck actually comes with this um, Axminster drill press. That's a really rather nice precision chuck. Um, good gripping, yeah, really nice piece of kit. The drill press itself, yeah, pretty good. I'm pleased with it. Uh, got it about a year ago now. Uh, fairly light use, but yeah, it's done done me proud so far. Okay, so please please excuse the awkward angle of filming. Um, it's, you need to be up close to see this. And I'm fed up with dropping my phone on the floor. I need to get a proper stand. Um, right, so here we have the arbor. Um, you can see this is a Morse taper. That's a Morse taper two and this is the Jacobs taper. Now there's a little bit of score in there, that's probably um, from the last video um, where the chuck came off um, and I didn't stop immediately and there is a very slight uh, indentation there um, I don't know, maybe it's taken a, a little bit of a knock um, other than that it's looking pretty good, there's possibly a, a rough patch there, there's a little nick there it's not looking too bad. Um, I'd be surprised if that didn't make. I mean, it actually just just to get this out, 
um, I just slipped that on as you saw and um, yeah it was a, um, a little bit of effort to get that off uh, the way you're supposed to do it I, just, I won't put it fully in um, you get uh, what are called Ar uh, arbor release wedges I think they're called um, and they're essentially just two wedges like this and they slide in either side so, like that and you just clamp them together or hammer them together and it'll pop that out of there um, I don't have that though so what you can do as an alternative is just give it a light tap side to side at the top there and that will come out um, don't go welly in it because you don't want to damage the, uh, the taper on there now we want to wind them in or wind the chuck in so that it will sit flat on that face now I'm just going to get, go and see if I can find a marker because uh, I just want to just check how well that is seating in there and uh, a black marker in rub around works as well as bluing. Right, so we've got a permanent marker here. You just take the arbor and just mark down. Just put some lines on it. Right, you don't don't really want to colour it all in because you want to be able to see any smears. So there you go. You can see the lines. Now. Once that's dry, just gently put that in. Don't let it lock. Just smear that round. And you should see any lines. So there's one particularly strong contact around the middle here. And there's quite a good contact at the top. We'll just clean that off and we'll do that again. While I'm at it, I'll just give in here a clean as well. So just, just use a bit a little bit of tissue paper for now. I'll maybe get some solvent on there later if it looks it it's actually looking pretty clean in there, so I, I, I don't think solvent's going to be necessary. That's looking absolutely spot on in there. That's a lovely clean surface. Just give it another another quick go. Right. So this time I'll, I'll be a little bit more generous with the colouring in. You want to get a permanent marker, not a water-based one. The water-based one just, they don't dry properly. Um, the permanent marker gives you a much better mark. And uh, if, you need, if you need to remove it from anything, uh, just a spot of acetone is all you need. And it comes off perfectly. So, just dry that out. So there we go. Fully coloured in. And into the hole we go. Not enormously good contact anywhere, really. There's a mark here, a bit of a mark around the end. I don't dare push that in any further. That nearly jammed on me. Okay, so 
yeah as, as before we've got um, we've got a line probably can't see that there's a there's a line here and a line up here and there's a bit of a line here so we've got three places on the taper uh, top middle and bottom which is quite nice to see um, not very much on this side it's a bit heavier on this side There's maybe a tiny bit of a lip at this end. I think I think that's probably going to be okay though. I'm I'm happy enough with that. It it's not perfect, but it's not bad. So uh, clean this up now. Right, I'm going to go and get a bit of solvent for that. Right, I'm back with uh, a bit of nail polish remover, which because uh, I can't find my acetone, so uh, thanks to the wife. That should. Get that off there, just get a clean rag. There you go, sparkly. And uh, just doing here as well. Oops. Right, there you go, sparkling clean. Now, I'm going to give it a quick wipe over with a scotch bite pad as well, just to make sure there's nothing on there we don't want on there. Lovely. While I'm at it, I think I'm going to do the Morse taper end as well. There's, it's got a little bit of grease on it, possibly from, uh, possibly from when it was manufactured but it would sit better without it, so give that a quick clean as well. I don't plan on doing the, uh, the quill. Yeah, there's a little mark in there. Uh, it's not proud though, so it should be okay. Right then, now to reseat the Jacobs, uh, the Jacobs taper, and literally put it in and turn it until it locks. Now it's it's self-seating, so if you put it in straight, you you could get it a bit cockeyed. If you turn it as you put it in, it will sit and self-align nice and straight. Now you want a piece of scrap wood. An enormous piece of scrap wood. Place that on top. And then just give it one good hit. And that shouldn't now come out of there in a million years. Well, it better not. If it does come out, it's not the end of the world. There are other things you can try. Um, if you stick the chuck in the oven, heat it up to, say, 100 degrees, um, stick this in the freezer, get it down to, I don't know, minus 10, minus 15, then repeat this process, put that in, tap that down. When this cools and this warms up, that will lock in there very, very tight. Uh, so tight you'll probably struggle to get it apart. Um, the hotter you get this and the colder you get this, the tighter that will lock. But if you get it too hot, you risk damaging the chuck uh, as it cools. So uh, that's yeah, <laughs> a la last ditch attempt there if you're doing that. So uh, that now, I'm hoping, should be thoroughly locked together. 
So the final step now is just to fit the chuck um, using Morse tape up into the quill. Um, this, this will lock probably a lot better than the chuck uh, simply because there's more surface area uh, for it to lock against. Um, you still want a little bit of a tap with a hammer in there, um, or a mallet I should say, uh, just to lock it in place but um, I, I don't see it slipping on the Morse taper anytime soon. There we go, that's locked in. I didn't follow my own advice there of uh, turning it as I put it in. So uh, that's why it didn't lock first time. Um, hopefully I haven't damaged the taper there. Um, I doubt it. So uh, it, was, it was pretty well seated. So there we go. One chuck, nicely uh, reseated. And still working. Excellent. Right, until next time. Thank you.